Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, the Independent National Electoral Commission announces winners for by-elections into the National Assembly for Bochi, Katsina and Kogi, as well as the State Assembly in Cross River State. People's Democratic Party alleges plot to arrest Senator, Senate President Bukola Saraki and his deputy Ike Paramadu, just as the All Progressives Congress accuses the PDP of monumental corruption. The Nigeria police loses four of its men to gunmen in Kaduna, but foil an attack by armed men in Zamfara State. At the United States Space Agency, NASA launches its mission to send a satellite closer to the sun than ever before. We begin tonight with election matters and the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has announced winners in the by-elections conducted in four states. In Bochi, Katsina and Kogi, the candidates of the All Progressives Congress were declared winners in the by-elections for National Assembly seats in those states. However, in Cross River State, the People's Democratic Party candidates emerged winner in the State House of Assembly by-election. The tension in the hall appears to be palpable as political observers and staff of the electoral body, INEC, gather to listen to the results of the by-election in Castina State. The by-election is held to fill the senatorial seat in the National Assembly, which was made vacant following the death of a senator representing Castina North, late Senator Mustafa Buka, who died in April this year. At about 4.42 a.m. on Sunday, the returning officer, Professor Hudu Abdullahi, announces the result. Ahmad Baba Keita, made from NBC, total vote 22,204,607. Dabir Usman Baba, made from PDP, Scored 59,724. That Ahmed Baba Kaita of APC, having satisfied the requirements of the law and scored the highest number of votes, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. Meanwhile, INEC has announced APC candidate Lawa Ogumo, winner of Bochi South Senatorial by-election, which held on Saturday. The by-election was conducted to fill the Bochi South Senatorial seat, which was vacant following the death of late Senator Ali Wakili. However, party agents raised eyebrows over the cancellations of results in some polling units, which they described as outrageous. The reasons given for the cancellations include overvoting, snatching of ballot boxes, and manual voting. That Lawali Hayagumo of APC, having satisfied the requirements of the law and scored the highest number of votes, is hereby declared, declared the winner and is returned elected. Meanwhile, INEC has declared the candidate of the APC, Alaji Haruna Isa, the winner of Saturday's by-election conducted for Lokoja Kogi Cotton Kafi Federal Constituency. About 19,960 votes were cancelled as a result of violence in some polling units in the two local government areas. Before the declaration of the result, some party agents who were available signed the result, except the agent from the People's Democratic Party, who refused to sign as he stated his reasons. I am Yusuf Isa Balare, the PDP agent. Where I voted in Adam Kolo Primary School, the, box, the boxes there were seized. And up to this moment, nothing was said about those areas and so many other places. Announcing the results of the election on Sunday in Lukoja, the returning officer, Professor Iroti Miyajai, disclosed that the total number of registered voters in the local government areas where the election took place was 153,470, adding that 51,669 voters were accredited for the election. Haruna Issa of APC, having satisfied the requirements of the law 
and scored the highest number of votes is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. But addressing a news conference in Abuja, the leadership of the People's Democratic Party is calling for the cancellation of the results of the by-election in Kogi State. Outright cancellation of the House of Representatives by-election held on the 11 August 2018. Two, that the government officials seen at various polling units on the election day buying votes, unleashing violence, harassing people, intimidating electoral voters of a different words on the date of the election should be prosecuted for electoral offenses. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party candidate, Mrs. Abe Ukuken, emerged victorious in the Obudu State constituency by election into the Cross River State House of Assembly. <coughs> Having won the majority of the votes cast, Mrs. Ukuken was subsequently declared winner by the returning officer, Dr. Tony Eyang. Ukuken Abe Awara of the People's Democratic Party, having satisfied the requirements of the law, has scored the highest number of votes. Mrs. Ukupen is the widow of the late Honorable Stephen Ukupen, whose demise led to the declaration of the seat vacant. In the meantime, the, Pe the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, is alleging that the presidency is planning to use the anti-grant agency, the ESCC, and security agencies to detain and arrest the Senate President, Bukola Saraki, and his deputy, Ike Kwere Madu. The party in a statement today by its National Publicity Secretary, Mr. Kola Ologodion, claims that it has unraveled plans to intimidate the two presiding officers by way of arrests. The PDP went further to say that the presidency's plans for the reconvening of the Senate is not for any emergency in the approval of the budget of the Independent National Electoral Commission for the 2019 election. The PDP says, and I quote, the fresh plot to detain the two presiding officers is part of renewed design to keep them out of circulation ahead of Senate resumption so as to enable the heavily induced senators, the heavily induced APC senators who are now in the minority to throw up two of their members as Senate President and Deputy Senate President, respectively, on the excuse that Saraki and Okwere Madu failed to show up for the proceeding in the Senate. Last week, there was a major incident at the National Assembly where the lawmakers of the PDP alleged that some of their colleagues in the APC were meeting to remove the presiding officers, an incident which led to the sack of the Director General of the DSS in an act described as a move to possibly usurp the government. Meanwhile, the All Progressives Congress, the APC, has described what it calls as the main opposition's rhetorics on the programs of the Buhari government as noise-making. The APC says PDP's latest allegations on President Buhari's administration's anti-corruption efforts are empty, baseless, and divisionary. The ruling party in a statement by its acting National Publicity Secretary, Mr. Yakini Nabana, is telling the PDP that Nigerians cannot forget in a hurry how the country was destroyed by those who termed the PDP's gang of pen rubbers. The APC went further to say, in 2015, Nigerians voted massively for the establishment of a truly progressive government to check the shocking level of impunity, corruption, disregard for the rule of law, and other deplorable undemocratic practices which previously defined our national life. The APC assures all Nigerians that the president holds sacred this collective trust. The APC made a list of some corruption cases ongoing in court, saying that there are more yet exposed of how our commonwealth were massively looted. The APC wants the PDP to apologize to Nigerians and be sober in its task of uh, presenting candidates to run for the 2019 presidential election. Four policemen have been killed by gunmen at Jankasa community in Igabi local government area of Kaduna State. Spokesperson for the police command in the state, Yakubu Sabo, confirmed to Channel Television that the incident happened when the intelligence response team were carrying out a special operation in Jankasa village near Rigasa, where they were attacked and killed by the bandits. The police, who are from the Inspector General of Police Rapid Response Team, Force Headquarters Abuja, were in Kaduna to carry out a special operation in some areas where some suspected bandits are said to be camping. 
Mr. Yakubu explains that the investigation has commenced to identify those behind the attack. He also says more policemen have been deployed to the area to ensure law and order. And in Zamfara State, it's a different story. The police foiled an attack and arrested eight suspected armed bandits who invaded Gurubin Bore in Zumi local government area of the state. According to the command's public relations officer, Mohammed Shehu, the bandits were arrested by a team of policemen when they attacked the Gurubin Bore market and abducted a native of the community. He explained that his men stormed the scene of the attack, rescued the victim and recovered guns with other dangerous weapons. Mr. Shehu says all the suspects are in police custody, undergoing interrogation, after which they will be charged to court. It's the second time there has been an attack in Gurminbor. The first was in May when the wife and children of uh, the State Commissioner for Youth and Skills Acquisition were abducted by gunmen. Meanwhile, incessant clashes between herdsmen and farmers in many states of the Federation can be curbed more with scientific use of land. That's the view of the former governor of Jigawa State and now presidential aspirant on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, Al-Haji Suley Lamido. Al-Haji Lamido told Channel Television's Ladia Kiridulwali on our special political program, Roadmap 2018, that at the root of the face-off is the increase in scarcity of land and the cooperation of all stakeholders as required to change the situation. We've been dying for the last how many years. Now, for how long do we keep on killing ourselves? That's the side. Number, number two, what is the cause? It's simply because there's contact between the herders and the farmers for land. It's all about land. The farmer thinks the more land he has, the more they yield. And the, 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 the possible thing that you know, the more he runs around, the more the cows will eat. All right? That's a fair enough. In America, there are people who know those cows. In Denmark, in Israel, they are there. Are they Fulamis? They have cows there. In America, they are farmers. Are they houses? Then I say, for how long do we continue with this kind of culture? Roaming around the anim our animals as pastoralists, and then using our physical energy, using whole to produce food for ourselves, unless and not able to address these two issues, we can't get anywhere because the farmer needs to improve his, his yield. Therefore, if he can produce 10 tons in 10 hectares, can you produce 50 tons in one hectare? If you can, then it means you have more food. You don't need the land. If the pastoralists, you know, who roam around, if there are cows who will eat maybe 10 kilograms within 50 hectares, can that cow take one kilogram within a small one hectare and then have the all the nourishment? So it's simply applying, applying science and our common sense. You can watch the full interview with Al Haji Sulelamido on Roadmap 2019. It airs tomorrow, Monday, August 13th, 2018, at 9 p.m., right here on channels television. In part two after the break, residents of Meiduguri, the Borno state capital, lament poor electricity supply and its impact on their businesses and lives. Please stay with us.